you know, they want to push their Green New Deal and they want everybody to buy all these electric cars and everything else. But our grid can't handle that. We can't even secure enough energy to keep the power going for the next five years for places out west. You're talking a major overhaul. So why is it we always have to start at the wrong end of the spectrum? We always start at the wrong end of the spectrum because that's just the way that the government works. Nobody really has a clear picture. Somebody has an idea and they start to run with it and then they try to get everybody else on board and everything else. And the next thing you know, they want billions and trillions of dollars for this thing. And you got some guy sitting in the back room back there somewhere that's kind of like, quote, in charge of some of this stuff. And he's sitting there going, thing I work. And they don't want to hear that. I don't know. We've already pushed this and we, you know, we got people on board. We've got all these votes. We've got trillions of dollars. What do you mean it's not going to work? Well, you're going to have to spend that first few trillions of dollars and start upgrading all the lines and all the poles and everything else. And then we can talk about what you want to do with the cars and everything else. Just a fact. I just don't get it, folks. You know, we always start at the wrong end of the spectrum on just about anything that we do do in the government. It just seems that way, at least. It seems like we're always uh, chasing our tails and, you know, we're not listening to all of the right information on what it is that we would like to do and accomplish in our situation. Mm -hmm. We really have to sit back and really think about what is affordable anymore. It wasn't too far back when we used to be able to go to the store and you could buy, if you had a couple hundred dollars, you could buy a lot of food. I mean, a lot of food, folks. Now, we did our grocery shopping today and we really didn't buy much. We didn't buy any meat. Oh, I take that no no we did not no we, they didn't have any we didn't buy any meat whatsoever and our bill was still 170 bucks stores i didn't not to mention what it is costing you to fix your cars car parts right now are through the roof uh when you have your car if you have to have your car fixed or serviced or anything else I had to have a new battery put in one of the cars uh, this past uh, two weeks ago. And I went back through and I looked and three years ago, I put a battery in a car. It cost me $119.99. This time around, it cost me $199.99. Three years later. The days of affordable living. They're, they're just, they don't exist anymore. I don't know how some families do it to have three and four kids. It must be a very big struggle to really do what you have to do. You have to be a very good planner and a very good person with your money in order to survive in this day and age, even if you're both working. The affordable part of the whole aspect of what is really going on in today's society is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer and the middle class is shrinking. It's a fact. It's just the way it is or anything. The, the middle class people of this country have shrunk a lot over the last decade and they keep shrinking. You see, when uh, Charlie Victor 19 come to town and then all of a sudden when people started going back to work, they couldn't get people to work. And so then they started raising all the, you know, the pay for all these people and everything else. So now what have they created? Well, you may be making, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour working at McDonald's. But with the high price of inflation, that 20 bucks an hour is like you're still making 850 here. I have noticed that. There's a lot of people that are homeless. There are a lot more people that have been standing on the street corners. 
there's a lot more eviction notices been posted on people's doors. Now, I see this on a daily basis. I see the people come and go. I see the people that are struggling. And it makes you wonder what is really taking place here. Why are we in such a disarray and why is it that nobody has any type of real solutions to this problem? Because it's all going to bills and food and housing and your gas tank. The prices have all gone up and they keep rising. They'll slowly keep rising. What they're doing is, if you haven't noticed, if you really pay close attention, what's taking place is, is they're what they're doing is they're slowly raising the prices. It's not like a big jump. It's a few cents here, a few cents there, a few cents over here. And it's just more money out of your pocket that they're taking away for the same product. And some products are making smaller now. They've been doing that for years, shrinkflation. So they make the products smaller, charge you more. We need to have something done in this country to stop all this kind of ridiculous rhetoric that is going on. We need to figure out a way to come back together as a country. We need to figure out somehow how we can manage to be a country again. You see, we've been so divided, whether people want to believe that or they don't, and maybe you don't believe that, but the proof is in the pudding. You have so many people that they, all they want to do is fight instead of trying to figure out solutions and work together. I'm not saying everybody has to agree on everything, but there comes a time when people have to sit down and they have to try to figure out a solution to the problem instead of pointing fingers at each other. You see, we the people, we're not the ones that are making the rules and the regulations. We're the ones that are working and paying the taxes and put these people into the positions that they are through our voting system. That's how it's done. Whether you agree with the voting system, you don't agree with the voting system, however you want to look at it, that's how it's done. We have to make sure that we are standing up for our rights our God-given rights, our constitutional rights. Um, now is the time for people to start pitching in and trying to help each other out and trying to make sure that everybody is on the same page and everybody can uh, thrive and survive and get through this difficult time that we're going through. It's not the first time we've gone through something like this, folks. Look at history. History repeats itself. We've gone through the Great Depression. People survived, all right? Millions of people survived. Was it easy? No, not at all. But they survived. We've gone through wars. We've gone through really trying times in this country. Economic downturns. Gas embargoes. We've gone through it all. And we're still here. Amazing, isn't it? But all it takes is for some people to use some common sense and put together some rules and regulations and try to get things under control and get things in check so that people can thrive and survive again. So, you know, we have too many things that are stacked against us. We have the major droughts that are still going on out west. Uh, the Mississippi River is, I can't imagine if that thing ever did dry up, what would happen because... You know, it's a main artery for moving goods and um, up and down the river. Has been for hundreds of years. And uh, out west, there's not enough water to go around. You know, they got to make decisions. You know, do we give water to the farmers so they can grow food? Or do we give water to the local cities that need it for the population. Uh, Lake Mead, if it keeps dropping at the rate it's dropping uh, within probably the next two years, if it doesn't stop, it'll be completely done. And there'll still be a little bit of water in there, but they'll have to turn off the dam completely. 
there'll be no water flowing through the dam because it'll be well below the any of the intakes and which means there's no water that's going to be feeding out to farmers feeding out to uh cities to the population nothing there'll be no power being generated which is going to put half that the west in the dark unless they can come up with some solution between now and then which i very highly doubt i really haven't heard too many people talking about you know what they're going to do about the situation that we are going through right now that we're dealing with that is at hand this is why we have to be prepping this is why it is so important for people to be prepping at this point in time yes it's costing you more money and everything else yes it's it's a very hard thing to keep doing but what's harder when everything finally just goes haywire and we have no solutions in the pipeline what's going to be more difficult prepping now or starving later or maybe you're going to be one of these people that sit there and say you're going to be waiting for the government or fema or whoever to ride in on their white horses and save the day and give you whatever you need. That's not going to happen, folks. They'll be riding in on their white horses, all right. But they ain't there to save you. I can tell you that right now. That's why at this point in time in a game, we're on our own. We have to stick together as a community. We have to make sure that we're doing what we can. We try to give people information. We try to help people out. We try to do all that we can do. And we thank God for what we have on a daily basis. Because the days of affordable living are out the window, folks, at this point in time. Now, we're going to have to wait and see what's really going to take place. Like I did say with the, uh, the house coming in, um, the new house coming in and everything. Uh, but... Then again, they've already had their, you know, their first like news conference and all this. And what did they talk about? They want to know about Joe Biden's son with his laptop. Did anybody say anything about, oh, well, let's see here. We have high interest rates. We have high inflation. We're in a recession. I don't give a shit what they say. Uh, just look at everything that's going on. You know, I mean, it's all written right there. Nobody's talking about this. It's either we're going after Trump. Now we're going to go after Biden. You know, like I said, we have to come to some type of agreement here, folks, or this country is going to go down the tubes really quick. I'm stating a true fact. Until we can come together as one and try to work together, like I said earlier, we don't have to be on the same page, but we have to make sure that we're trying to work this out. We have to start thinking about our families. I'm sure a lot of people out here, maybe you have kids. Maybe you have grandkids. I have grandkids. I have kids. I worry about them tremendously, about where this country is going and what my grandson is going to be going through and what he's going to be paying for. Think about it. Somebody's got to pay this bill. Yeah, it may not be us. We could be dead and gone. Somewhere down the line, in the next 50 to 100 years, somebody's still going to be paying for all the stuff that's going on right now. With us being in so many trillion dollars in debt. I think the last time I looked, at what, what was it? 30 some odd trillion? I don't know. Does anybody out there know? Put it in the comments. I, now, it has turned more into survival mode for a lot of people. They've been thrust in survival mode. What do, what's more important? Buying clothes for my kids, putting a roof over their head, food on the table, making sure we have heat in the wintertime. Because not all of you live down here in Florida. Those are some pretty hard decisions to make, isn't it? Very. I mean, I can only imagine what a family of four must feel when they go to work, 
and they come home, they get their paycheck on Friday, they pay the bills, if they're lucky enough, they get the groceries, and there's nothing left. Any emergency comes up, your car dies, you got to buy a battery, there's 200 bucks. Where's that going to come from? You need brakes on your car. There's another 250 to 300 bucks. You need tires. Depending on what kind of car you got, could be setting you back over $1,000. You see where I'm going with this? We have to make sure that we're following the fundamental guide of being a prepper. Number one, we take care of our family. The whole goal of being a prepper is you're taking care of your family. Number two, you're always trying to make sure that you have either money set aside, you have money that you have turned into silver or gold. Depends on how much money you do have. Gold is a little out of the question for a lot of people. Silver is very affordable for more people than not. So you do have some cash on hand. Three, you always have an emergency fund of some sign. You know, you, you could have, you don't have to have tens of thousands of dollars in there. But if you had enough to cover your bills for one month, what happens if you get in a car accident? What happens if you get sick or in the hospital? If you have enough in your emergency fund to cover your bills for at least one month, and I'm talking your car payment, your rent or mortgage payment, food, and any fuel that you may have to be buying as far as gas for your car or fuel to heat your home. So if you can cover yourself for at least one month and have emergency funds set up, that would be a huge bonus for a lot of people. You also want to make sure that you do have plenty of food. In case of an emergency type situation, it doesn't have to be an SHTF situation, a grid down situation. More than likely, some more than most things that people are going to face is loss of job, somebody's sick that's in the hospital and they're not working, could be the breadwinner of the family. These are very different type of emergency situations that we have to be aware of that we have to plan for. These are things that are probably more than likely going to happen than an SHTF situation, a grid down situation. Um, you know, one of these type of disasters, you know, these are the things that we can plan for. We can plan for hurricanes. We can plan for blizzards. We can plan for ice storms. We can plan for floods. We can plan for, you know, all these different types of scenarios that are out there. But more than likely, somebody getting sick and ending up in the hospital, somebody getting a car accident, is probably the two biggest things and reasons why it is very important to be a prepper. Let's face it. A lot of people think, you know, the end of the world's coming and everything else. Could be. Don't know. If it's the end of the world, it doesn't matter if you're prepped or ready or not. You lose your job tomorrow. Are you ready for that? You get in a car accident going to work. You end up in the hospital, your car is totaled. Yeah, you can call a lawyer. You can get everybody involved and you can do all these type of things. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. That's why it's so important to realize that when you're planning for a lot of these different situations, you're planning for yourself, you're planning for your family, you're planning for your future. You're trying to predict and control what will happen if one of these different scenarios do play out and how your family can react and then bounce back from whatever type of scenario took place. You see, we all have to realize one 
simple thing. We don't rely on the government. We rely on ourselves to provide for our families. A lot of you people out there, you go to work, you bust your ass every day, you collect your paycheck, and you do what you have to do. You may be going without. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah, it'd be nice to buy a brand new shirt or something like that. But if your kids need a new shirt or a pair of shoes or something like that, a decent parent would sit there and make sure that their kids had those new shoes or that new shirt before the parent did. Doesn't work in all situations. That's why I said a good, decent parent would make sure that their kids have whatever they need before they have whatever they wanted. That's how it was when I was growing up. If I needed a pair of shoes or something like that, my parents always made sure I had a pair of shoes if I needed them. Tennis shoes, dress shoes, whatever. It's the little things that go a long way, isn't it? Because it's all on how we teach our kids nowadays. Our kids are our future. Our kids are what's going to be the ones that are running this country someday. One of our kids out here could be the next senator, next congress, could be the next president. We don't know. But it's all on how you teach and raise them now when they're young is grooming them for the future. I'm very proud of my kids. My kids turned out to me, excellent. Now they had their ups and downs, trust me, they're not perfect <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. But as they grew older, they got wiser. The whole point of this is teach our kids now because they're the ones that are gonna be our future. And if we groom them right now, the future will be a lot better for a lot more people. Because right now, the affordable living has come and gone. Hard times are coming. And we have to ride this out together. But the whole point of this is we have to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to stay ahead of the eight ball because things are only going to get harder and cost you more in the long run at this point in time in the game. I'm trying to be the bearer of bad news, but also trying to help you realize and understand why the bad news is here and what we can do and how we can try to avoid this. Because that's my main goal, is to watch out for you.